Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome to another edition of uh, the AccessToTrader.com nightly wrap-up show. Hope everybody is doing well. Hope everybody had a great uh, day of trading. If you are new here, please, we love the support uh, and the viewership. So if you could be kindly take a moment just to click like, uh, subscribe, share if you're brand new, and hopefully uh, we can continue to provide uh, great value. Uh, I'm going to cut this a little bit off a little early. Uh, my son has the, AA, the spring AAU uh, basketball schedule for all you guys out there who kind of know as parents, it's absolutely wild. There's another practice that I have multiple games all over the place. Anyway, so I like to kind of make it short and sweet. So yesterday, a uh, very impressive uh, rebound by the Bulls, right? We talked about it yesterday. Uh, they reclaimed the 10-day moving average on this little baby hammer it put in. And the question of the day was, can the Bulls reclaim the five-day? If you watched last night's video, uh, we talked about how the importance of that 309 level. And that 309 level uh, is the five-day moving average. And if you are brand new to the channel, uh, most people don't use the five-day. I do. Um, because, again, for me, it, 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 it really sh does show you who has control of short-term sentiment. And not only did uh, the Qs reclaim uh, the five-day moving average after reclaiming the 10 yesterday, they put the highest close. Today was literally the highest close uh, in this whole formation. If you, even if you look, go back to uh, the March 22nd highs, and you know the, we closed at 306. The March 23rd highs, we closed at 309.75. So closing today uh, above three uh, above uh, 312.70s uh, takes out this whole channel here and provides again the highest close in this whole formation. Uh, so you know basically going into tomorrow's session, uh, unless there's some really materialistically really bad news okay uh the bulls have to put up a fight today uh put up a great fight yesterday and have to continue this momentum tomorrow the last thing they want to do is give back that 309 uh, ultimately what they want to do is start building and these are kind of the levels uh going into uh going into tomorrow's session we want to make sure that we confirm today's channel above the 313.35 level, and ultimately in the, in the perfect storm would confirm the 322 highs of 315 and a quarter. If that's the case, we could push up to this uh, upper Bollinger Band. When you look at the spies tonight, uh, spies reclaim the 50 day. Think about how impressive this is. This whole banking fiasco started about three weeks ago, right? Major considering majority of the biggest weighted names in um, the S&P 500, arguably are the banks. Considering that we lost the 50-day moving average on this whole banking fiasco on March the 7th, and we reclaimed it back on March the 29th, that's phenomenal. If you would have told me, uh, you know, if you would have told me the first day that we lost the 50-day moving average on the spies, then only three weeks later, we would, we would reclaim it and to put in the highest close in this whole formation after four banks uh, would go belly up. That's incredibly impressive. And that's the whole point of this whole rally uh, that started on January the 6th with technology that commenced after we reclaimed uh, the 50-day moving average, right? Then we lost the 50-day moving average and today we, we reclaimed it back on the SPYs and obviously the Qs are in their own you know, dance. Think about the discrepancy. Think about how much stronger technology is because the 50-day moving average uh, for the Qs are down here. We just reclaimed the 50-day on the SPY despite of all the bank failures and all that stuff that's going on. And we're literally a stone throws away from uh, the highs that we set from uh, two weeks ago. So that's super duper, uh, in, you know, super duper important. If you look at the final tally today, you have the Dow uh, putting up a 1% move, up 300, uh, the S&P up 1.4%. Uh, and the NASDAQ heavy technology, 1.79%. But more important, again, certain days, uh, like we say this all the time, certain days we don't have to, you don't have to be creative, right? You don't have to be creative. You don't have to look at the second and third and the fourth tier stocks going into the next session. If we do confirm today's channel, you're going to want to look at the big cap techs. All, all you have to do is look at the big boys, right? You got Microsoft an inch away, literally an inch away taking out this whole channel, right? An inch away of taking out this whole channel. If it does, it's going to start uh, testing the 317 highs. Look at a name like Intel, right? Intel is not a name that we focus on anymore because my two go-to names 
uh, in the, the semiconductor space or NVIDIA and AMD. But look at this massive breakout today on Intel. They were coming for the short-term $35 calls. This used to be a huge market bellwether, especially during the dot-com craze. It was, uh, it was Intel, Microsoft, Oracle, and Cisco. As you can see, only one of them, right, survived as a bellwether. Uh, but Intel looks absolutely phenomenal going into tomorrow's session. Look at AMD, right? Look at AMD. You know, if it, AMD is right below the five-day moving average. It's got rejected back-to-back -back days on this five-day. If AMD reclaims the five-day moving average, it could start running up. Look at, for example, Amazon. First close today in this whole formation, right? Above this whole formation, they were coming for the 103, 105 weeklies. This thing looks strong. So you kind of get the point, right? You kind of get the point. You don't have to be super duper, super duper creative. As much as I like, you know, you know, as much as you know, you, it's cool to trade names like Roblox and TTD, and that's cool. There's nothing wrong with them. But you're going to be fighting for 40, 50, 60 cents for Roblox and TTD while a name like NVIDIA, and again, there's another name, NVIDIA, if it could just get above this whole channel here, you could see a move going back to the 76 highs uh, from was from a week ago. So we're set up for tomorrow, right? And the only thing that could really screw this up is some really big bank to fail overnight. And I'm not talking about like, uh, you know, middle Tennessee regional bank with uh, three uh, three employees. I'm talking about like Citibank, right? We don't want that, okay? We don't want that. The, another thing we definitely don't want is a massive gap up, okay? Because uh, today was one of those days I, di I, I didn't believe um, I didn't, despite it's closing at the highest level, I still think there's a little bit of risk to the, to, to the move so that there wasn't a lot of exposure here overnight in technology. So I'm hoping, I'm really, really hoping we get a, a dip, uh, open. We get a light volume open. Uh, they wash, uh, they wash some profit takers at the, uh, at the open. They trap some shorts. That'd be a perfect world. Everything goes red to green. Uh, we'd start taking out uh, the today's channels and we start really, really getting aggressive into the top channel of last week's highs and the queues. Uh, if we do gap up tomorrow, and of course, that's a possibility just because uh, this is, again, this is the, uh, the highest close in this whole formation. Then we're going to look for the stocks that still have the biggest range uh, that potentially could have the biggest move, even though they did gap. And that takes me to a stock, for example, like Tesla, right? Tesla was a weird name today. And the reason why I said it was a weird name, here's the 60-minute view today, what happened on Tesla. It, it felt very, very odd, right? Tesla had a really nice move like everything else at the open. And then next thing you know, the next candle, the stock literally went from 95 uh, all the way down to 89 with absolutely no news. It looked like some forced liquidation was going on only to recover later. So there is an area on Tesla for the next couple of days uh, that I definitely will be watching here. But ultimately, if it could start building back and, and start getting back above this 150 day moving average and then this tesla could have a really a lot of room but i think there's still one or two days maybe one day uh before that happens but again baby steps we don't want to put the cart in, the, in front of the horse but this is something again that we need to be uh prepared for a name that i also like uh crm look at crm this is the highest close in this whole formation uh after earnings highs they were coming for the 200 weeklies and the 200s for next week so again, we are set up with technology. Uh, I don't care about biotechs today. I don't care about banks today. I don't care about second, third, eighth tier stocks. Give me the Megillah Gorilla, right? Give me the stocks, the most aggressive stocks, uh, beta heavyweight tech names. If they start confirming today's channels tomorrow, I think we could be in for a pretty aggressive session, and as we call it, a potential premium day, right? Let's cross our fingers. We don't know what's going to happen. Uh, we can't predict it, but the only thing we could do is get ready for it. So some days, guys, you have to think and overthink and analyze and overanalyze and second guess and third guess. Today's trade, uh, today's uh, close was super duper bullish. All we need to do is confirm today's price action tomorrow, and we could have a, hopefully a big premium session ahead of us. Guys, that's my time. Daddy D Duty's call. I have to take my son to practice. Have a great night, everybody. God bless, and I'll see you all tomorrow. Take